Today we're looking at design. And the reason being is because Webflow has a page on their marketing website about prototyping with Webflow, about avoiding the design team and the development team back and forth by getting the designers to prototype a design themselves. But one question is still to be answered. Can we skip the design stage entirely and just start prototyping design ideas directly inside of Webflow? Well, I would say, yes, we can, and also, no, we can't. But rather than just saying both yes and no and then ending the video, I'm going to show a hybrid model, a way that we can save time by not having to design every single page inside of Figma before we take it into Webflow, but while also being realistic and knowing that if we start the whole design process directly in Webflow, then we're going to have a bad time. So let's jump in and see what this hybrid model looks like. So the website design process typically looks a little something like this. We get a sitemap and content from our clients. We design the pages of the website inside of Figma first. We get client approval or maybe do some edits and then the client approves it. And then we develop each page inside of Webflow and adapt it to the different screen sizes. And then of course we finally launch. But that design stage can take a massive amount of time. And if the design has to be handed off to a separate developer, then there's no good solution to this. But when the designer and the developer are the same person, when the design doesn't need to exchange hands, you can skip a lot of these steps. So instead, the designer just creates a couple of key pages in Figma and then gets it signed off by the client and then jumps straight into Webflow and designs all of the rest of the pages around the pages that they've designed in Figma. Which means all of the time that you would waste designing every single pixel in Figma, you skip. So all of the extra pages on the website are instead uh, designed on the fly when you develop it based on those original designs. So while you're building, let's say you're working off of a content document from a client, you can look at a section of content and say, well, based on that content and based on the design that I've already done, we can make this new section look a little something like this. Now, obviously this option only works if the client knows that that's the process that you're gonna use from the start, so there's no surprises. And as this is a process that I use uh, for quite a lot of my projects, it's something that I tell the clients on the actual discovery call. And so I say that when we're gonna go through this design stage, uh, I'm gonna just assign the home page or an, another page or two with that if it's a large website, and then do any rounds of feedback that we need to uh, and then go straight on to developing the website inside of Webflow. And that way we can cut weeks off of the website timeline just by reducing that design time and moving straight onto the development, which gets the website launched faster, which is a big plus for clients. But if someone was just a developer and then you gave them uh, just a homepage to develop and then told them to design and develop more pages around that style, uh, then they might struggle. Uh, but if they were the ones who designed that page, then they have the context of the design choices that they've already made. And so they can keep applying those design choices straight into development. So this all sounds great in practice, but to really understand it, it's probably better to see it in practice. So let's jump straight into an example. Here I have my homepage that I've designed in Figma and then I've developed that in Webflow. And so now what we're gonna do is we're gonna create a new page uh, around this design. So for example, uh, let's say we do a blog main page and we're gonna use the design that we have already uh, to know what that blog main page might look like. So what I'll do is I'll just duplicate my homepage, just call this one blog, create, and we can just cut this title down to blog is fine for now and we'll make this heading a little bit smaller maybe about that uh, and the page header also doesn't need to be so big as well let's go small page header maybe about that much and I'm just going to get rid of all of this content uh, that we have All right, so now we just have a header and a footer, and now we're gonna actually design the page content directly inside of Webflow. And so, because it's gonna be using the CMS, uh, I'll drop in a collection list, and that's gonna be pulling uh, from the blog posts, and I already, already have some uh, kind of default blog posts there, just so I have something to design around. And now I can go into my collection list, and I'm gonna make this a grid. So I already have a class set up for a th three column grid. So that's just kind of a standard three grid. Um, and now I'll design a kind of card for my blog post. So I'll drop in a, a link block for the card itself. Where is my link block? Drop that there. I can already uh, drop the image in. And I'll just get that to pull uh, from the blog post. 
and then uh, what I want to do, I want to drop in a uh, heading, heading for the blog post and also a paragraph. And so, you know, that's kind of a, a standard setup for a blog post card, but now we want to make it fit kind of a little bit more of this style. So we'll keep it quite sharp. We might add information above the title. Uh, let me just add in a text block above here. And this is going to be uh, my category, uh, my heading. So that I'll grab that from the heading, just the name. And then this can be the post summary. And I'm just going to add some classes to this. Maybe about that size, maybe a little bit smaller. Same with this one. So all I'm doing is figuring out this design on the fly. I already have some uh, classes set up, um, so that helps a little bit from the home page. Uh, and then I'm just kind of figuring it out from there. And so uh, I'm going to put this one, this piece of text, uh, into a block. And I'm just going to copy out this text again. This one's going to be the date. Maybe I'll make that a bit smaller, short date, something like that. Maybe more like this, I like that. And then uh, to kind of fit this style again quite sharp with the line, I'll add like a divider between these two pieces of text. So I'm gonna drop in, or I can just copy and paste uh, this one here, unlink that one, and I'll just create uh, like a vertical divider. And then this can be my blog post info row, just make that columns and it can wrap if it wants to. Maybe some of some of the margin to it, that's a bit much. Maybe a little bit smaller. Soften up that color, that's not bad. I might actually change this formatting, I think something like maybe something smaller. Something like that looks a little bit nicer. And that looks pretty good. Might just do a little bit less of the bottom margin. And then we'll just link up this card. Make sure that's going to uh, the current blog post that it is. I'm finding that line height a little bit too high. I'm just gonna reduce that to about four, just the tiniest bit. And actually might increase that again. And so as you can see, all I'm doing is just kind of designing and figuring it out as I go based on what I've done already. So I already know the style that I'm going for. You know, I've, I've set up kind of some ideas and some of that branding in Figma. So I already know the kind of feel that I want it to have. And then I'm taking that feel and I'm applying it across this new page that I've made. So if I were to do uh, now the actual blog individual page, so if I go into my blog posts template, and I'm just gonna bring in uh, my navigation, my footer, my page wrapper. Oh, one more time, my page wrapper. And now I'll drop in first section, section, and container. And I've already set up a header class that I used on the home page, so I'll pop that in. Um, make my container also page header. Uh, maybe that yellow is going to be a bit too sharp. Maybe I'll do light gray page header. Pop that down to the colors that I've set. And this is going to be the top of my blog post. I'm just going to use something like a two column grid. Again, maybe I decided that uh, it's a bit too big, I'll do a short one. And then on the left side, uh, maybe that's where I'm gonna have the image. Oops, it easies, and I'll just pull from the cover image. And then on the right hand side, I'll have my text box for the post. So I'll drop in a div block 
call that one text box. Uh, and then maybe I'll make it even faster. I'll just grab uh, what I have here. Pop that into here. Don't need that one. Maybe I'll still use that one and that one and that one. And that's now a bit small and that's a bit small. That's pretty close. I'm just going to vertical align this. So that's the center of that div block and that's a pretty good blog header to me. I'm just gonna copy and paste uh, this section and it's just gonna be regular section and then that's going to have the actual content of the blog post. And that's a bit large for me, so I'll just create a new, um, a new class, we'll call it blog post content or rich text or whatever we want. And it's gonna have a max width and it's also gonna be in the center. Maybe I wanna do a comfortable reading distance, so maybe about that wide. And then uh, we have the top of the blog post, we have the blog post itself, and then maybe we just want a kind of um, other blog posts section. So I'm just gonna copy this section go into my blog post and paste that in. And we'll make this light gray. And I might just add a title in, sorry, a little header in for the section. Other blog posts. And I might just add a bit of a spacer in, give some more space for that one. And that's not too bad. Again, just designing on the fly, I think I prefer like a lighter gray. So I'm just gonna go ahead and add in a little bit of a lighter gray. So I'll create a new swatch. It's gonna be a little bit lighter, maybe about that white smoke yeah why not white smoke we'll call it that and i'll move that swatch into place later on but for now that's good and that's looking a little bit better on the blog post and i might actually do that to the top as well it's a bit dark for me make that more of a white smoke and i'm just going to pop back down to this section uh, we don't want to show too many let's just make this we'll limit items to three and we'll also make sure that we're not showing uh, the current blog post and those are all linking off to uh, the respective blog posts so perfect now this is another full page fully done and we'll just check that it's already adapting to the different screen sizes i might even want to make uh, it's a bit big make that 40 on mobile and so in that span of time we've created a new blog post page a new blog main page and we've done it on the fly just based on the initial design that we had in Figma and that we've built in Webflow. And so that's the power of designing on the fly in Webflow. So thanks for watching. Let me know what you want to see a future video on, but otherwise I'll see you on the next one.